My name's Henry Jones. I'm a uh, commercial fisherman. My family have been involved in commercial fishing for uh, six generations. Basin Plan is a, is a new plan to uh, to put some river, some water back into into the rivers for the for the environment. I think over the years we've taken out uh, far too much, and and uh, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to make the rivers sustainable, working rivers sustainable, and also have be able to pass on something to future generations. I'm Sarah Moles. I come from um, the Darling Downs in Queensland. Um, I have a deep connection to the Murray-Darling Basin. I've lived in it for about 25 years now. I came to Canberra because I'm very conscious of the fact that the voices that I'm hearing through um, the media is that the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, the draft of which is due out in a month or so, is going to be an absolute disaster for irrigators and for irrigation communities and it's all gloom and doom. There are a range of other views out there, most of which are not saying it's all going to be gloom and doom, most of whom are saying, thank God, it's about time, we've got a real chance here to turn things around and we have to grab that chance and take it. I'm Lance Howley, I come from a little town called Kylite, which is close to where the Murrumbidgee River meets the Murray River. I'm, I'm a farmer, I've been on my property there for uh, 42 years now. The family have been there for 100 years, so we've seen most things come and go. Um, and there's just been a steady decline in the health of the river, particularly in the last two decades. We're just getting further, the environment is just losing and losing all the time. I'm not an expert in, in other areas, but I am an expert in the lakes and Kurong area. Uh, it's absolute devastation down there. Um, it, it happened long before the drought. The drought has made it really hard to recover, but uh, it really started in 1981 when the mouth closed for the first time. Since then, uh, two thirds of the Kurong has died. Um, the, the Kurong is 140 k's from the mouth down to Kingston. Two thirds of it is now dead. A lot of people think that water flowing past an irrigation pump, for instance, water in a river that flows past an irrigation pump is water that's wasted. Well, it's not wasted. It carries out extremely valuable ecological services for us. Unfortunately, we don't value them in an economic sense, but if we were to stop those processes from happening, it would, the world would collapse around us in a very, very, very short time. So water is incredibly valuable, but not all the value is counted. Environmental damage is not done when there's a drought on such as now. The environmental damage is done when there's plenty of water in the river, but it's not allowed to flow into areas where it did in historical times. There are wetlands out there that have haven't had water in them for uh, almost two decades. The communities have suffered because the environment is, is, is just about dead, but they've also, uh, the rural areas, for instance, in Lake uh, Albert, there used to be 23 dairy farms. Now there's three left. We have changed the Murray-Darling Basin almost beyond belief. And if we don't make some very substantial changes now, at a time when ecosystems are really at, if not on, tipping points, meaning that they won't recover. If we don't do it now, we won't get another chance. We've pushed it too far and there's just no more resilience or elasticity in the system and it won't bounce back. And that's the real fear because if that happens, then there is no future for agriculture or pastoralism and indeed a lot else in the Murray-Darling Basin. Well, it, it's one of those things. Our forefathers went out into the, uh, into the Murray-Darling Basin and they did a magnificent job. They were very brave people. They, they uh, carved a, a real future for everyone as they saw it out of the Murray-Darling Basin. And they, did, they certainly did a terrific job under great hardship. But with the vis benefit of 2020 hindsight, um, they prob some things probably shouldn't have occurred. And that's not being critical. That's, you know, I, I take my hat off to those fellows. 
but we now have the benefit of hindsight and we do have to redress or, or alter some of those systems that they set up. Well, we're at Canberra at Parliament House because the politicians are here and the politicians have got the final say. And, and we're just seeking the support, uh, Liberal, Labor, whoever, we're just asking them to be strong. Um, this, this is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity to uh, put something back into the river, to have a sustainable river uh, and, to, and let's pass something on to future generations. First of all, we need a really strong basin plan and we need people to support a strong basin plan. If it's watered down too much, if the cuts that are made to satisfy irrigators uh, mean that there is insufficient water left in the river, then it's almost worse than doing nothing. We'll have gone through a very protracted, difficult, expensive and complex process for no real return. We have to, make, we have to do the hard yards now if we want to reap the benefits. We have to do something and we have to do it fairly quickly and the, the best way as I see of moving forward now is with a Murray-Darling Basin plan. Hopefully it will lead to a better outcome for the whole river system. Back media back. coverage is media coverage and sometimes any coverage is good. I mean in this issue it's uh, the more it gets out there the better chance it's got to be. I guess uh, getting through to the end. So while he sat there uh, taking notes in his head I found that interesting. I mean. Uh, He's obviously younger than me, so I've got to write it down. <laughs>